I think this is a good segue to get into the actual poll that we recently did. And I started this on Twitter. And the question that I had was, uh, what will happen to banks in the next five years because of crypto digital assets? And there was some really good responses and the comments, I'm not going to go through uh, all of them, but uh, the ones that I did not expect to uh, be the main one, which is banks will in innovate or they'll create their own uh, was the clear winner by far. Uh, a lot of people do not have faith that banks are gonna go away. They believe that uh, they're in the pocket of the government and the government will actually bail the banks out at some point and they will start to do things because you know, that's just what the government seems to do for all the central banks and banks in general, retail, and whatnot. So banks will innovate 55% and this was only 400, eh, 444 votes, not too bad. And then over here in our YouTube poll, because as you can tell, I have a weak Twitter game, but in the YouTube poll, uh, we had almost 1800, well, over 1800 votes. And clear winner, again, banks will innovate and continue leading finance. And I made that very good point. Will they continue leading? 33% said yes. And then the close second, uh, they'll create their own digital assets and take the lead. So I find it interesting that we are in this space and we talk about how great cryptocurrency digital assets are, but we don't believe that uh, banks will ever get out of the way and uh, just kind of lay down. Now, there is a big difference uh, between innovating because it is the right thing to do and you want to upgrade certain things and do great things for your customers as opposed to innovating for survival. <laughs> and I think that's essentially what's going to happen here. When you have to innovate to survive, it's amazing what you'll be able to do. And uh, maybe that could be the case. Now, I see a blending, a merging of the old style financial and banks and what's happening over here in de decentralized finance, DeFi, cryptocurrency digital assets, and really come into a more open type of financial system. Hopefully we can get a little bit, uh, you know, into that direction. I'm not for sure, but uh, that's what I see. And honestly, I was surprised that uh, it was voted this high. Anyhow, speaking of banks and how they should be a little bit more open, let's take a look at the next piece. Jamie Dimon. Oh, how we love you. JP Morgan Chase to pay 920 million, just about a shade under 1 billion because of spoofing. So what's going on here? Yet again, JP Morgan Chase is set to pay another record uh, fines. This one, almost a billion dollars to resolve probes from three federal agencies over its role in the alleged manipulation of global markets for metals and treasuries. And I have to tell you, I have to tell you, I can't believe the kind of nonsense that the banks get away with and they just get slapped in the wrist. So, I mean, sure they pay are gonna pay 920 million, but how much do they actually make? Three billion, five billion, 10 billion? So wouldn't it just be at in their best interest just to go, you know what, we're gonna pay fines, let's just put the money away and just wait for these suckers uh, in the government to actually, you know, rattle us out. We'll pay it and we'll move on just like we've been doing for the entire, our entire lives in the bank. That's what I think is going on. But uh, sad but true. The figure was released Tuesday by the by the CFTC uh, in a statement from Commissioner Dan Brukovitz. Bank has quietly settled a long-running lawsuit that accused the bank of manipulating precious metals markets with spoofing trades. What's spoofing? Well, uh, the penalty is a record, uh, which is when sophisticated or spoofing when sophisticated traders flood markets with orders that they have no intention of actually executing and the practice was actually banned after 2008 financial crisis and regulars have made it a priority stamp out so all they do is that these big whales come in and they go and they put in all these different orders and they go i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy buy and people look look at it and go wow look at all those buy orders there must be something going on and then they fomo in and these guys are like <laughs> suckers we're not buying squat and they just pull the orders that's spoofing. And uh, they banned it in 2008. I mean, they had a good solid 12 years to get rid of it or to get rid of that practice And because uh, we're in 2020. But hey, JP Morgan, do whatever they want to do. The contact, the conduct of the individuals referenced in today's resolutions is unacceptable. And they are no longer with the firm. Daniel Pinto, co-president of JP Morgan, said in the statement, we appreciate that the considerable resources we've... Done. I can't even read the rest of this. This is just a prime example of how to just put out some kind of nonsense statement just so people are like, well, okay, suddenly they're really going to do the right thing. They're not going to do the right thing. They're going to continue on with the same practice. Like I said, if you are going to make 3x, 5x, 10x, and you only got to pay a fine of 10%, just keep doing the same thing because nobody's going to jail and nobody really cares and they're going to turn a blind eye. And that's why we kind of need DeFi cryptocurrency, digital assets to come in because this stuff's got to stop. <laughs> Lastly, <laughs> this is so sad. The bank, the biggest U.S. lenders by assets, has entered into a deferred prosecution agreement with the DOJ that will expire in three years 
if the firm satisfies its obligations under the deal, meaning you're on house arrest and uh, just don't mess up anymore and uh, we'll just uh, sweep this under the rug. That's sad, but that is exactly how the world works. I'm sorry to say, kids. All right, let's move on.